Uh, so a convention of states resolution passed the House this week. If it passes the Senate, North Carolina would become the 20th state to call for tapping Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution to convene a convention of states outside of Congress. Uh, so this is really interesting to me. I was kind of surprised to see it. Um, Pat, fill us in a little bit on what this means. What's a convention of states? Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh I sort of love this issue. Uh -huh. It's a little bit wild, and you have a lot of characters involved, which I think right. is great. This is what the government is supposed to be, right? Uh, in effect, there is this largely grassroots movement that began in 2013 um, that are just lobbying state legislatures to, um, to, to allow for or call a convention of states. And if 34 states out of, of course, the 50 in the country decide to do so, then there will be a convention of states. Each state will send delegates, um, and they'll... Uh, discuss amending the U.S. Constitution. Now, this particular movement is focused on things like fiscal restraint, sure. um, reining in what they perceive as sort of overreaching powers of the federal government. Um, and a few days a year, Senator Gailey knows, um, there will be this large mass of people dressed colorfully. Uh, I the think there llama. was a llama there at one <laughs> point. Llama. It's just a whole... But that's like... This is their constitution. It's sure. not... Out. It's not the policymakers. It's their constitution. If they want to come and lobby their legislators to to amend their own constitution. I think that's great. You know, sure. I think it's a, just a fascinating um, sort of issue to keep track of. Um, and I'd be interested in the former attorney general's um, take on some of the, the legalities and you some of the other the risks associated with that. Because I know there's a lot is, there. This thing is very personal to me. Uh -huh. uh, let, let me not age myself. In 1972 where I had no business being. I was the chief counsel and staff director at 31 years old of the Senate Subcommittee on Separation of Powers. Well, this came up because it, it's, it's really the only, the Constitution's only a, attempt at referendum, if you right. think about it. Right. And there were no procedures anywhere for this. So you'd have that mad bunch of people coming up to amend the Constitution always with no procedures and guidelines. And so we produced, and they're in the archives now, so go at it. We we have, under a little bit of my help, guidelines now for such a thing to happen. But I have to point out that it it never happened before, and it probably won't again because you can't get it all together because there are really not there are no guidelines and no great will on the part of the legislature to do it. Uh, it it's sort of a thing that goes goes in one ear and out the other ear. But I like the provision, but it's just hard to do. Very interesting. So you were at the press conference, right? Uh, you know, we, we were, they had a press conference about this. Rick Santorum comes in and talks about it. Tell, tell me what your thoughts were. Why do they want to do this? I wasn't at the press conference, right. but I have seen them, I guess, it. a couple of years now. Sure. And it's, I think it's what you were saying about just the government is a bunch of characters, which is true. Right, <laughs> and, right. and seeing how the process is and sure. anything where you're questioning, you know, the, the people that are telling you how to do things and you want to change it. I think that's, it would be fun to cover, honestly, right. is my, right. my takeaway on, on why they do that. But uh, reporters asked Senator Berger the other day, what, you know, what does the Senate want to do with this? And, you know, they don't know yet, but sure, the sure. Senate usually isn't as interested in things that the House is in. Uh, Senator Gailey, what do you think? What are your thoughts on why, why would we want to do this, do you think? And is there an appetite for this on the Senate side? Yeah, so with Convention of States, the most important thing to remember is why do people want it? It's not to get bogged down in the who, where, what, when, how are we going to have a Convention of States. It's what's the point behind the whole thing. They want term limits and they want to do something about the national debt. They're worried about our national out-of-control spending. And in fact, very recently, the editorial board of the Washington Post, incredibly liberal paper, has started to wring its hands and be sure. concerned about the size of our national debt. It's 98% uh, of our gross domestic pro national product mm -hmm. is, uh, is the equivalent of our national debt now. And experts say that when it, re it reaches that 100%, one one-to-one -one ratio, then the, co the country is really in trouble. And sure. you start to have to sacrifice things like uh, national security and Social Security and Medicare and other entitlement payments. And mm -hmm. so is with the Convention of States, it's super important to remember people are concerned about the age of people in Congress and how people get elected to Congress and don't ever seem to leave, which we can't say is true about the North Carolina right, General right. Assembly. <laughs> the average uh, term in the General Assembly is much, much lower than it is for Congress. Right. And really sincere and legitimate concerns about the size of our national debt. Sure. That's what Convention of States is I'm about. I'm really interested in uh, seeing how this turns out.